Welcome to My Favorite Bitch, where we talk openly about the good, the bad, and the oh my fucking god ugly of raising dogs, and sometimes other non-canine pets, including the human ones. We might talk about poop, and we might swear, so fair warning. Thanks for joining the pack, now let's get this ball rolling. For a game of fetch, of course. Hey everybody, welcome to My Favorite Bitch, the podcast where we share honest tales about the good, the bad, and the, are you kidding me again, ugly, of raising dogs and other pets. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to be talking about dog collars. Yes, dog collars. And as is true to the core mission of this program, I'm not going to talk to you from the perspective of some expert. I've not gone out and done like tons of research on in statistics on collars. You can do that. You can go out to Google and you can find the pros and cons of different types of collars. Now, I'm going to talk to you um, with an honest tale about, in this case, the slightly ugly of uh, trying to find the right collar for my dogs. And it is a long and very uh horrifying experience not really but anyway um yeah so uh i'm going to full disclosure this right up front my current dog moxie uses a prong collar when we walk now i'm hoping to change that she is going to be sent in about a month month and a half to a board and train so she's actually a pretty good walker with the prong collar, but I know with the board and train, they're really going to get her into some serious loose leash type of, or no leash type of walking. So I'm really excited about that. Not, I wouldn't, I don't think I would ever feel comfortable taking her out with no leash, but um, the loose leash, loose, loose leash, is it? I can say that five times. The loose leash will be very exciting if we can get that accomplished where she doesn't have to wear the prong collar. But right now we do, and I have no guilt or shame about that. And we'll talk about that in a second. So um, my long history with dog collars begins with my last two dogs, the late Ripley, most awesome chocolate Labrador in the entire world, and Sammy, my good boy, the aloof but still lovable Pitbull Shepherd, both of whom are now in that great farm in the sky. And um, I I had a lot of trial and error with collars, mostly with Sammy, the, the mutt. Ripley, as a chocolate Labrador, similar to Moxie, my current Labrador, Silver Lab, was actually instinctively a pretty good walker. She was not bad at all. And ultimately, after a few attempts at different collars with her when she was a pup, By the time she was walking any significant amount of distance, we had settled on the halty or the gentle leader. Now, if you don't know what that is, and I apologize for folks that are on audio only, but I'm going to just, I am using a little bit of motion in the video. A halty or a gentle leader is a a harness type of a um, contraption that actually goes over their nose and then there's also a collar that goes around their neck and they're they're connected at the end. The nose part has a loop and you connect, instead of connecting the leash to just a, like a straight collar um, that would go around the neck where the, the, um, the pressure is on the neck, this one actually a- attaches at the bottom of the chin so that whenever the dog turns its head or tries to pull, actually... Let me rephrase that. Whenever it tries to pull, it its head will turn, and, and that's not desirable to the dog. So it tends to be pretty effective at keeping the dog from pulling. And Ripley used the the halty or the gentle leader, the halter style, for several years. Uh, actually, about six, no, about eight years, and it was fine. Once she actually got out and was walking. She was she was fine, but getting her into this halty, this or the gentle leader, every single time without exception was an exercise in uh, patience because she did not want to go anywhere near it. I don't know why. 
We we did all the t- right types of training with treats. We, we weaned her into it. Um, she'd worn it years and years and years, and she knew that it was a good experience. It didn't matter. Every time I pulled out the halty or the halter style, she would go running. And sometimes it would take both me and my husband to get her cornered so I could get this on her. She would, we called it the mask of shame or the the um, halter of shame or something because she would then kind of just, once it was on her, she would sort of just drop her head and um and it act like it was just the most horrifying thing. Like she was Cersei Lannister being walked down from the key or to the keep or whatever it was that she did and and the nuns yelling shame. But once she got out on her, on her walk, it was fine. She was fine. And it, like I said, it was effective at keeping her from pulling. Now, she wasn't a horrible puller anyways. She was more my socializer, just like Moxie is a socializer. She instinctively walked pretty well, but if she got sniffing into something, then that was that was all over. So um, Ripley wore this halter style for about eight years. So hold hold that thought because she lived well beyond eight years, but we're, we're going to hold that thought. Samson was my pit bull shepherd. Samson was the real challenge because whereas Ripley was more social and she really didn't want to stray far from her humans, which is very typical of um, a lot of Labradors, Samson had a very high prey drive. Samson, Ripley could walk by, as with Moxie, Moxie will, will walk by like 10 feet away from a squirrel or a bunny and she sometimes doesn't even notice it. Sammy, my mutt, was very, very intensely um, on the lookout all the time for a squirrel, uh, a, a chipmunk, a bird, whatever it was. He was on the lookout. He was my my high prey drive. He was the protector. So it was a lot more challenging to get to find a collar that worked with Samson. So for the better part of an entire year, I went through multiple types of collars. And believe me, I didn't just try one once and then if it didn't seem to work, we're done. No, I would try for weeks at a time. We used flat collars. Nope, didn't work. I mean, he had a pit, the pit bull neck and he would strain if there was anything in the vicinity, um, he would strain. And it actually would scare me that he was going to hurt himself. We tried the martingale. The martingale has the kind of a loop in there so it um cl- it closes tightly also there might be another name for it but that's the one that kind of ad- is a sort of adjustable slips over the head and is adjustable we tried a slip lead like caesar milan um useless we tried tw- two different types of of the halter the gentle leader and the halty uh those ones which worked very effectively on my labrador uh, Sammy would go every single time we went for a walk, he would go into an al- alligator roll multiple times to try to get out of it and successfully would get out of it. Fortunately, they have a um, like a safety um, collar or a, a yeah, safety collar that um, prevents them from getting away if that happens. But he would get it off of his nose and we'd have to put it back every single time, multiple times. He would just go into an alligator roll. Now, you imagine trying to get a 50 or 60 pound dog up multiple times on a walk. Walks don't become walks become very not fun. <laughs> so we tried those um, several weeks each didn't work. Um, we tried the choke collar. Choke collar didn't work. Choke collar is basically just a, a collar version of a slip lead. Didn't work. Um, I don't know. We and we tried multiple versions of each. And I was at my wit's end. I was at a point where I really thought we're just not going to be able to walk. We're, we're not going to be, or it's going to be a horrendous experience. It's not going to be fun. And we're going to do this for the next 15 years. So I follow this website called Learburg, L-E-E-R-B-U-R-G, where they sell supplies, but they also have a lot of training videos. And I ended up going there one day and I was watching a prong collar training video, how to use the pinch collar or the prong collar, which I know... A lot of people out there just knee-jerk reaction think, oh, it's a prong collar. It's it's horrible. It's a torture device. You should never use it. Would you ever wear one yourself? No, but I wouldn't also eat food off the floor or put my children in a crate either. 
Um, so prong collar. Oh, it's just the most hideous thing. And I kind of thought that too. I thought, well, isn't this, isn't this cruel? But in truth, if you really look at the prong collar, it's actually for um, preventing tracheal damage and um, uh, and correction is much more effective than a flat collar and and less dangerous than a flat collar. Um, so I, I watched the, a couple of these videos and where they they used it. And I thought, OK, I, I'm, I'm at my last choice. There are no other collars. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. I also we also use the harness too. the harness. People who use harnesses, um, if you have a big dog or a dog that pulls, it's folly. It just makes the dog pull harder. A harness is basically what you use when you put a dog, like a, a husky up to a sled. I mean, th that's how they are able to pull. So um, we tried the harness from the back and we tried the harness that had the front thing and they, they never, they just shift. They don't really, they're not really effective. So anyways, I wanted to, just wanted to throw that in there. If anybody out there is going, Beth, you went, you went for the prong collar, but you didn't even try the harness. Yes, we tried several different harnesses. So I was at my wits end. I was ready to give up walking. Very, very frustrated and saw this video on Learbird.com. I'm talking about um, the effectiveness of the prong collar as a as a training tool, and I said, "Okay, um, I just got to suck it up. I don't I don't have any other choice, right? I mean, should I really been that shamed? And people walk around and they've got like like ten pound chains on their dogs. Okay, so do I? What, should I really be that ashamed about a prong collar? Anyway, a uh, whole other topic. But um, so I got the prong collar, and it, it worked like a dream it only took a couple of days a couple of times of doing a quick correction it's very light you start off very light it's not like you're um you're really uh you know it's like it's not like it's poking holes in his neck right you do a very quick correction and it's just um it, it it's more effective than the flat collar because they they do feel it it's just like when your kid tries to touch the stove and you slap its hand right it doesn't really hurt them but it they react to it, right? And and nobody whose kid's about to touch a, a hot stove is not gonna uh, is not gonna slap their hand. If you are, then you're cruel. Um, you're more cruel than if you don't um, slap their hand. Just just like using a prong collar um, in the right way, like any collar um, can be very effective. And with Sammy, it was it worked beautifully. He I, it took a couple of training sessions with some very quick and light corrections, and I really didn't have to correct him maybe a handful of times over the next 12 years. He wore it the entire time. Um, he was about a little over a year, maybe a year and a half when we finally settled on the prong collar. So um, we used that his whole whole life. And he he never shied away from it. Unlike my, um, my dog with the, quote, gentle leader, Ripley, who would go and hide in, in under the table, under the chair, in the corner, whenever that thing came out, um, the gentle leader, Whenever I pulled the prong collar out, Sammy was like, just, yes, this is, we're going for a walk. Oh my God. Wonderful. So here's the interesting thing about the prong collar. Sammy wore this thing for about 12 years. There was a point, some point with, with Ripley, the lab, where I just, I was just like, what in the hell is she doing? Why is she run every time I pull out this halter? So I said, you know, just for kicks and giggles. And I want to say it must have been, I, th I think what happened was Sammy might have been not able to walk. Like maybe he had um, like a knee or something. And so it was just Ripley says, you know what, just for kicks and giggles, I'm taking her out alone. I'm going to put her in the prong collar. She didn't shy away from it. She, we put it right on. And it was very effective. Same as with him. I didn't even have to correct her. Just having the thing on, she was like, yeah, I got it. I got it. No problem. So I bought a second prong collar and I walked both of my dogs for about four years with the prong collars, both of them. And it was 180 degrees with Ripley. Whereas with the halter, with the gentle leader halter style, she would flee when the prong collar, the torture device came out. She was wagging her tail and right there with Sammy. So <laughs> The thing about collars is any collar can be misused. If you have a flat collar that and you're, you're avoiding other collars because you think the flat collar is the most humane 
and you're letting your dog or your dog is pulling to the point where they're choking, which is what my dogs would do. Um, that's not humane. That's not humane. If you are, um, if you have a choke collar or um, a martingale and the same thing is happening where your dog is not obeying and, and, and believe me, I know folks, training is important, but training is difficult, right? It, it's hard. And we're talking about average people here. So give, give a little leeway. We're hoping we're getting the professionals involved with Moxie. So hopefully we can, um, we can make some changes there, but any collar can be misused. And it's not humane if you if your dog is to the point of choking and you can't control it. Is it more humane if you have a choke collar or a flat collar and your dog is like borderline crushing their trachea um, or that you have a, a, a collar with a little bit of pokey uh, around evenly, evenly spaced pokey, um, but they don't pull. They're not going to run out to the street and get hit by a, a car. They're not going to lunge at another dog or a small child or uh, whatever, a cute bunny, a cute bunny. Um, so which is more humane? That's, that is the question I ask you. And I say this because I have so many people in my life. Um, people put it out on social media. I follow, I've t- talked about ad nauseum how many dog sites I follow, trainers, experts, um, breeders, uh, rescue sites and people are very as they're very passionate about um adopt don't shop they're also very passionate about uh, the horrible prong collar or the pinch collar <clears throat> but in truth it's actually very humane and it's a very very effective in many cases the bottom line for you is you need to find the collar that works for you now moxie went through the same thing as sammy now she's pretty young and again by nature she is a pretty easy um, walker, but she does pull. Um, and with the flat collar, especially if we meet another dog or uh, another human, forget it. She's she's choked. She's literally choking. When we go to take her to daycare, <clears throat> I know they're very judgy about the prong collar. So I usually put her in a slip lead or just use the flat collar or the harness and she's uncontrollable. So hopefully um, her board and train will help with that. But when she's got the prong collar on, um, she's much more manageable, right? So I'm um, not perfect with her because um, another human is like the pinnacle of excitement for a Labrador. Um, so there is the, so we do we do continue with training. It, it's it's a tool. A, a collar is but a tool. So we still work on the training. Um, but Moxie wears a prong collar. We tried um, again several different collars and. It was the choking, 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 and that scared me a lot. And I've had experience with the prong collar. The prong collar works, and that's what we use every single day. So the bottom line, again, is for you, don't don't be judgy, because unless you've been there, you don't know. Um, But also understand that other dogs aren't your dog. So your dog might walk very effectively with a harness or with a halty or um, I see dogs all around my neighborhood and they've got the harness on and they seem they seem fine. Great. And maybe we'll get there too. I also see a lot of dogs with prong collars on and a lot of um, retriever type dogs, uh, goldens, golden doodles um, and Labradors with prong collars. Why? Because they're effective if you use them in the right way, just like any other collar um, in, in, in certain situations. So find the collar that's right for you, continue with the training, but don't be ashamed if you're using a collar that other people get pretty judgy about because chances are 99% of them don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And they're just knee jerk reactioning, like just like people who, who do the adopt don't shop. They don't really, they're not really thinking about what's going on. Right. Um, so, Hey, if you're a pinch collar or prong collar user, use a way use it effectively, use it correctly, and um, and happy walking and training with you because uh, they do work um, in some situations. So that is my story about collars. Like I said, I've gone through a lot um, with my three dogs in the past 15 years, and um, we've settled on what works for now. We'll continue to evolve and figure things out and work on training. But right now, that's what works for us. 
I would love to hear from you about what collar you use and your experience with collars. Are you one of those people that thinks that um, prong collars are just hideous and and hateful? Um, I'd like to talk about that. Um, or how, do you use a prong collar because, hey, it's effective. Um, what other collars have you tried and, and what kinds of success or failures have you had? What kind of dog are you using those with? Let me know. Um, reach out. You can... Um, uh, talk to me and get in, con- get in contact with me in all different sorts of ways. Uh, end credits will tell you where, but if you go to my website, bethanncampbell.com, you'll have links to all of my social media there and also a contact sheet. And if you are a dog lover and have some honest tales about the good, bad, and the oh my fucking God ugly of raising dogs or other pets, let me know. We'll get you on the show. All right, folks. Thanks for listening today. This is My Favorite Bitch. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Take it easy. Now go play fetch or take a nap in a nice sunny spot. See ya. Thank you for joining My Favorite Bitch, where we don't hold back about what it's like to raise that little fucker of a pet. We hope you had fun. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell, and you can reach me on Instagram or Facebook as TheBean67, that's T-H-E-B-E-A-N-N-6-7, and also on Instagram as MoxieBlueYule, that's my dog site, she insisted. I'm also on LinkedIn as Beth Ann Campbell, that's Ann with an E, and check out my YouTube channel, Beth Ann Campbell, where you can find this podcast and other fun videos on the playlist, My Favorite Bitch. Remember, we are not trained dog professionals in any way, so please consult the real experts and do your research on anything you hear on this program. We barely know what we're doing. Now go give your pet some snuggles and we'll catch you after a good nap and some tasty treats. My Favorite Bitch is produced by Beth Ann Campbell and is a product of Beth Ann Campbell, LLC, all rights reserved. Go fetch Moxie. Good girl.